Joining us now from Abuja is presidential candidate of the Advanced People's Democratic Alliance, Kabir Shitu. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. Thank you. Preparations are no doubt in top gear ahead of the 2019 general election. Interestingly, we're going to have 76 presidential candidates as against the figure of 14 in 2015. Uh, what do you think has inspired this upshoot in the figure? Uh, for us, uh, we believe that the democratic space is being open. Uh, people are now aware that uh, democracy is the way. Uh, dictator dictatorship, uh, military ship has gone. So everybody is prepared now to as embrace democracy and we are now embracing the culture and everybody is coming out to express his own uh, uh, feeling and, and taking his own destiny by his hand instead of waiting for other people. And uh, the youth in particular, uh, you see that the sensitization that youth should come out for politi politicking has really, really uh, endeared the youth to now come up. And you see that most of us that come out for this presidential uh, contest are young Nigerians who are ready to take Nigerians from this level to another level. And talking about uh, the Nigerian youths coming out this time around to test the, you know, their metal uh, at the poll, uh, would you say that uh, they are really ready? You example, are you ready to take on the reins of power in Nigeria if given the opportunity? Yes, uh, I'm ready. Uh, ready because we have our blueprint. Uh, we believe that uh, this country uh, the former leaders have done their best. Uh, when we needed them after doing independent, we have our father, got four fathers that stand, like Sardona, like Aulowo, like uh, uh, Zeke. Today, what Nigerians need is now to join hand and build a country that will work for all of us. In, in building this country that work for all of us, uh, our agenda is, look, it's enough of us going in the way of copy, copyrights, copying other countries, copying from uh, advanced countries. We should now start to advance in our own course. And for me, in particular, we look at agriculture, we look at commerce, we look at education in the agricultural sector, we are looking at it that we must go commercial. If you go into commercial agriculture, it will give you industrialization. And if we build industries, our youth, to me, youth will get work. People will not be looking for white collar job any longer. And because of this, we want to review our state, our, our agreements with World Trade Organization, uh, where our country will not be turned into a dumping ground. And secondly, we look at education, because it's through education you can improve technology. And technology is what drives the world today. What do we do? We don't uh, allow our education. We improve on vocational educations, technical colleges, agricultural colleges and universities. This is where we want to go in the area of education. And allow innovations, because it is innovations that trigger economic development. When people are innovate, when innovation come in and technical educations are being promoted, vocational educations are being promoted, we will, there will be less dependent on a degree where people are only thinking of white collar jobs. And we look at area of how do we now improve in our own uh, security. And especially when you talk of food security, you must industrialize. And you cannot industrialize in this food area without electricity. And we now look at it, yes, you can see just a few days ago, one week ago, the Chinese are saying, we want to light our street through artificial moon. What are that technology? 
when the Russians were going to their space, Americans did not wait for Russians to sell their obsolete equipment for them before they go to space. They joined and they, today they are both in the space. So Nigerians should now join to now know how do we, how do Chinese come about putting up artificial moon that will now light their street. We should go even ahead of them. That is why we say in the area of education will bring about vocational, technical, and in area of where people can now think of innovation so that we change from this obsolete equipment that we use our billions of dollars to bring into country and then putting up our own industry. And we look at somewhere like Ajakuta steel industry because if we can put Ajakuta into use, we will be able to build our own cars, we will be able to build our electricity equipment, we will be able to build our industrial equipment, and that is why that place is not allowed to grow. So it is okay. one of our priority to see that this area work. It's all right, Kabir Shutu. It, it appears that... Um, and help us in developing our industries. Oh, it appears that we're going to have to just look at some other issues because you seem to you know, have exhaustive ideas there. But let's talk about some other issues ahead of the 2019 general election. Just recently, INEC charged the electorate to pay attention to the credentials of political candidates. As a matter of fact, telling them to challenge, you know, falsified information in court. Would you say that is the responsibility of the electorate? Uh, what role should the umpire play in asserting the credibility of many of these candidates that have been penned Pencil down for the 2019 election? For us, Nigerians are to look at who is to represent them. Today, I put myself forward to say I want to take on the presidency of this country and I have all it takes. I will submit myself, my document, everything to the public and the public have right to scrutinize my certificate. So if the uh, electoral umpire are saying that Nigerians should scrutinize who uh, they are going to vote for, I think they are right. And the issue of certificates, or not even only certificates, people should look at the antecedents of the people they want to elect. What are their antecedents? What have they done? What is their, what have even when they are in schools, all these have to come, and that is entrenching and even helping the democracy to grow. Where you don't vote mediocres into office and wait for another four years, and this will even discourage those that does not have the requisite uh, uh, qualification to to say they are coming out. What are they coming to do? So it is time that. I support the electoral umpire to do that, to scrutinize, let the public scrutinize us. I come from a village. Okay. My villagers know when I went to primary, when I went to secondary, when I go to the university, they will know my antecedent. And I think that will now allow people that have something to help the country to come on board. Come November 18th, uh, the political gates will practically fling open for campaigns to start. Now, of course, INEC has set the amount to, to be spent on campaigns by candidates regarding, uh, uh, depending rather on the offices they will be vying for. Now, the pressure is on INEC to monitor this, the amount to, that they will spend, but then it seems to many already that going into the 2019 election, money is going to play a lot of roles yet again in determining uh, the way forward. I don't want to say who emerges. Uh, for us, we believe that uh, money politics is what we must do away with. Uh, if you are talking of uh, uh, spending billions of dollars, are we trading our political space? Is our democracy for sale? The answer to me is no. And that is why from 2019, we, are, uh, we should change. And I'm happy that Mr. President has signed Electoral Offenses Commission into law. It is time that the electoral, this commission allowed to take off so, the, so that this 
commission can now monitor the expenditures of various political part, uh, aspirant, uh, candidates. And this will help the country. And we know those that stole money that are now coming in with their money will be monitored. And I want to urge the populace, Nigerians, the electorate, to say, look, it is time that you do away. Because for the past 19, 18, 19 years that we've been practicing democracy and money has been exchanged hand, development has eluded us. Now that we want to create a country that will work for all of us, we urge Nigerians to do away with money politics. If people come with their money, and that is why I next say, scrutinize them. Where are you coming up from with that money? Where did you get it? How did you get it? And monitoring the amount and reporting it to the electoral umpire. And if the uh, Electoral Offenses Commission take off, it will be easier for people to report because this Electoral uh, co co Offenses Commission will be able to prosecute whoever has violated this rule. People were not being prosecuted before. So 2019 should be a year of prosecuting people that have put themselves or have uh, breached electoral laws, as this will curb uh, uh, menace that we find ourselves today. Well, and it's obvious from previous experiences that mere talks is not going to deter Nigerians mm -hmm. from collecting money from politicians. You mm -hmm. talked about prosecution. Uh, for instance, the amount of money to be spent on presidential campaign has been pegged at five billion naira. Who has the responsibility now? to monitor how much political parties are spending and eventually prosecute offenders, which in most cases have been across board in previous elections? Uh, when I was in chairman of Interparty Advisory Council, uh, in 20, in, and that is in 2012, uh, we are the one that brought about this issue of electoral Offenses Commission, because we emphasize that the only way, because electoral umpire, which is INEC, has much to bite. Therefore, you have to take that away from them. And that is why they could not prosecute people. But if you have an, a, a separate commission that will monitor this, which is Electoral Offenses Commission, they will monitor, they will document it, they will take people to court, they will be able to prosecute people. Or, you know, human mind is wicked until you have the law to regulate it. Now, if the new knows that there's a uh, commission that will monitor them and be able to punish them, you see that people will sit up. But people were doing what they do, do before because there's nobody to monitor and, and, and prosecute them. Now that we have that Electoral uh, Offenses Commission, we empower them. And the citizens, that the electorate, would must also monitor. And if people come with their money, the question you ask yourself, if I take this money, am I going to see this man for the next four years? Because it is an investment that is, is bringing. Don't allow him to invest on you with one naira or 10 naira. And then take one billion naira after four years before you see him. You come again with a peanut. So we must talk to ourselves. We must be able, to, as our people, to change, to now believe that let's create a country for ourselves that will work for all of us. And that is why somebody like me give myself out to Nigerian, because we are ready to create a Nigerian that will work for all of us. And of course, uh, talking about uh, being ready, uh, to serve Nigeria for the 2019 election to mm. hold. And that will only happen when there is peace across the land. There are fears already, really, that so many people are already stockpiling arms and ammunition. Why? We do not understand. In fact, President Momo Dubuari already raised that fear and met with service chiefs a few days back. So how important is it that Nigerians generally understand that peace is important going into the, general, the 2019 general election and even afterwards, before, during, and after. And for peace to be in, you know, entrenched in st troubled states at this time, even before that time. Uh, 
Uh, you have brought me back to uh, my thinking in 2012 as chairman of Interparty Advisory Council, where we propose proportional representation. You see, what cause, when you have proportional representation, what that entail or mean is that if I got a 25% uh, in this presidential election and somebody got just 35%, that person take cost home with victory. And you that have 25% have to cost back with nothing. Now, if you are talking of proportional representation, I would be able to say, okay, party B, party A, party C, you got so, so, so percentage. Therefore, you can have representatives in the assembly, in the government, in this. That will curb do or die why people are now stockpiling uh, arms. Because Nigerian uh, mm -hmm. political system today has come to be do or die. People believe it's like it, that is only industry that is available today. Mm -hmm. And we, at this level of our APDA, we don't want Nigerian to look at politics as a venture. It has to be a service. Mm. You are going for service. And why people are piling ammunition, is they believe that they have to take it by all means. So if you put proportional representation beside electoral offenses commission, eh, people know you'll be monitored. People know that if I can get into 30%, 40% of the election, mm. uh, of the vote, mm. I can be able to be represented. It okay. will curb do or die mind. It's People all right. believe that I can try <coughs> again. Let's so just quickly. We are urging that during our time, these two proportional representation will come on board and will be able to curb do or die politi politicking. Let's have your opinion very briefly on the coalition attempts that we have seen recently. There is the coalition of United Political Parties, mm. uh, CUPP. There's also presidential aspirants coming together under the umbrella of pact. Are you looking forward to join any of these coalitions? Uh, and what do you think of them, really? Uh, for us, as presidential candidate, we can come together to talk to ourselves. First of all, to stop uh, hate speech. Secondly, to see the country as one, and that we are only going for service. But in the issue of talking of pacts, Therefore, if I join PAC, then I have nothing to offer Nigerians. If I have something which I believe I'm to offer to Nigerians, I'll give myself to Nigerians to, to look, at my, look at me, vote for me, and I now come on board. But if I go into PAC, I'm not sure of myself. Therefore, APDA and myself as the flag bearer are not going for any PAC. But we are ready to sit down, talk to ourselves, to curb the menace that is good, especially the hate speech, attacking ourselves as presidential candidate. We now want us to bring out issues, politics of issues. What are you going to do for Nigeria? The government in power, what have you done for Nigeria that is different from what an is bringing to board, on board? Have you built our railway? How many kilometers? How much have you spent? Has it worth it? She too, what are you bringing to on board? Are you going to build railway different from what they are doing? All right, it, it seems uh, he just uh, rounded off with that he discussion. Well, we, and then oh, he's back. Okay, Kabir Shitu, presidential candidate, Advanced People's Democratic Alliance. Thank you very much uh, for featuring on our show today.